Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Bloomtown by Sidekick Games. In Bloomtown, you're going to be playing two to four players. It takes about a half an hour, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Bloomtown, you're basically going to be building a town with a usage of blooms. You got this board here, and there's a bunch of tiles in which you're going to start with two, and then you're going to place one and draw one place one and draw one rinse and repeat eventually when three of the five stacks have been depleted the game will end you're gonna be scoring whenever you place tiles or some bonus actions you can take but the idea is simple build a town and score as many points as you possibly can before the game ends and when the game ends you're going to have two tiles left in your hand which means you can discard one and keep another and that's going to score you again with those cards it's a very very strategic tile placement game which can also allow you to mess with your opponents in certain ways to make sure that their town is not going to be as beautiful as yours anyway let's go ahead and take a look down below and i'll show you bloom town show you how to play and then i'll give you my review so here we have bloom town and it's all set up for two players but before we get into that let's talk about what you get the first thing you're going to get is player boards you're going to get four of these guys here but because we're only using two only two are out here are the other two you'll also be getting a rule book which is really easy to understand and has a wonderful player reference on the back which is all you will need for all of the players you're also going to get a big stack of these tiles here which are all the different buildings and when you're setting up for two players you're going to take out six of each of the different types along with when you take out these guys here make sure you take out uh, one of each of the specific types of this specific type of building there's also these little tokens here which will be used for special abilities once again we get to use this token here very powerful everybody's gonna get one of those everybody's going to then get two of these tokens here and there's gonna be eight tiles laid out on this board randomly face down flip over one of each on these spaces here and make sure that you can see these specific symbols there you're gonna be getting a lot of these tokens as well and they're basically victory points or bloom points that go from 1 to 20 different point increments and then at the top of the board here is going to be the different ways in which you could score doubly for when you're placing buildings down so that's pretty much the setup and what you get in the game to start the game it's pretty simple you're gonna go ahead and do this whole I don't know, pick a hand type of thing where and then the person who picks it gets to go first or maybe the first person who uh planted something or last person who planted something however you want to work it out but once that player gets that first player marker then they're going to start by placing down one of the tiles in their hand but before they do that they're always going to check to make sure that there is no symbol of one of these guys here matching down below here and if there is you'll take that and place it up here and the reason you do that is because when the second one of these comes up you're going to score that specific type of building again and the way it shows you how to score them will tell you on this player sheet. Whenever you score, it'll show you this here. And whenever you rescore, it'll show you how it works down here. But anyway, after that happens, you're always going to refill the tiles up. And you don't, you never refill tiles on your turn, regardless of whether you take an action or not. That might be a bonus double action. You only refill at the beginning of turn. So go ahead and then select one of these and place it down on the board. You can place it anywhere you want on the board. There are different symbols on the board. And when you start, there's an A side that you play the first couple of games with before you advance to playing the B side, which is definitely a little bit more challenging. But when you place it down on a board, wherever you place it is where you're going to draw a new tile from. So if you place it on the rose here, you'll get this into your hand. Place it over here on this specific uh, dandelion, you'll get this park here. Or here on the leaf, you'll get this card. You, so on and so forth, you see. So wherever you place it is where you're going to draw a new tile from. Each of these buildings will score differently. And it says here on the player reference how that works. So for instance, if you get offices, which are the blue guys here, you're going to score one for the office itself, plus one for every adjacent up or, or down scoring building. So in this case here, you see the office that scores one and it will score for these three as well because they go horizontal, horizontally and vertically. There's subways that will score diagonally, and then there's parks that are going to score based on how many you can get to a group. And for each set of, uh, of three, you're going to score up to uh, one, three, and then four points for each tile. Homes will give you one point plus one per point per unique neighbor. So maybe you're going to put offices next to the home, which will give you a point, or subways as well, and that could give you two points. And then shops will give you one plus one per matching neighbor. And it's going to be based on the different types of shops. And neighbors are going to be basically these guys here. So if you have a shop that's a green and a red, and you play a park and a home next to it, that's going to score you three points. So very useful as to how you can score points and how you can combine points with these guys here. This player is simply going to go ahead and play one of these guys down here. He'll place it on the board here next to this little uh, bloom here. And he's going to take this one right here. 
after he places the tile, he's going to actually score. So what is going to happen is when he places this one down, he'll instantly score whatever points it says. And on this board here, it says one for one park. So I'll just go ahead and set that there. Normally I set it in the pool, but just so you guys will get an idea of how that works, I'll place it there. Then refill this board here. And then the next player is going to get to take a turn. In which case, he's going to go for, mm, I don't know, let's go for subways. So this this one here, he'll place right, uh, right there. Yes. And he's also going to score a single point. He's going to get this one here and place it into his hand. And then he is done. He flips this over and it's the next player's turn again. Now this player wants to place down another park. There's no park here. So he's going to determine does he want to place it here, here, or here. Because that's going to determine whether he, he wants to get this one here, this one, or this one. And in this case, it looks like he might want to get... Mm, let's go for this one here. We'll go ahead and go for the... the interesting home i suppose and we'll place this just like this and scoring the same with parks now that there's two stacked together he's going to score three points for that one in which case he's also going to take this tile here and another one is going to flip out and that is this player's turn this player is now going to have a chance to play one of his tiles and he will play one let's go for right here and he places that right Ooh, actually ooh, this we want this we want this one how do we get that one well, we can go over here, I suppose. And when we go there, we can then take this one here. But that's only going to score us one point because they're not connected diagonally. So maybe we want to try and get them all together in one way or another. Place that there and flip another one over. Oh, we ran into this here. When we run into another one of these of the same type, we're going to place it up here. And when that happens, we're going to d score doubly anything that it specifically says based on these, this chart here. So in this case, we would score homes twice. There's no homes on the board, though, because no one cho chose to play any of these guys here. So we're not actually going to rescore them. And homes generally will score just as in regular scoring. So they would score one point plus one point for a unique neighbor. But had we got something like maybe this one here, which is the parks, these guys will score two points per tile. So in this case, they would score four points. So homes are now out, which probably makes them less interesting to get in the game. When one of these comes out, you'll flip over a new one and the game will just keep progressing from there. Now it is this player's turn again. He wants this park specifically, so he wants that leaf. So he'll go ahead and place this right there. Now, this space here is going to allow you to do one of two specific free actions. You can go ahead and score double for the points there, or you can go ahead and take another turn. However, when you take another turn, you cannot. So there's not going to be uh, a refill. So I'll go ahead and place this here. That's going to score me as a home one point per unique neighbor plus one point for itself. So in this case, just one simple point. And then I'm going to take this leaf card here. Now, if I go to place this here, uh, I can actually place, uh, take any of the other tiles here, which is actually really useful. So I can place this just like that and then check the scoring again. That's going to score me four points for it being the third in a consecutive. But however, after three, it doesn't, uh, it won't give you any more additional points in a set. You have to go ahead and do a new one. And now I can take any of these that I want. And maybe perhaps I want either a green or I want to get a yellow. Now I already have a park, so maybe I'll go ahead and take this one here. And that would end my turn, and we'd flip over these guys, and then it'd be the next player's turn. And now he's going to get to do what he wants. Maybe he'll go ahead and place this here. That's going to score him two points because he's got one diagonal right here. So that's two points there. Additionally, he'll take this leaf card here, placing it right here. And now he gets to take another action. And in his case, instead of actually going and taking another turn, he is actually going to go ahead and score double. So he'll get to score again for uh, this tile he placed down. And that's going to give him four points. And that's the game and how it works. And basically, as we continue playing the game, these guys are going to pop out. You're going to refill the board here. And eventually, these are going to be removed. When these three are removed, and then these are removed as well, that would signify the end of the game. So after three stacks are completely depleted, that would end the game. In which case, you're going to score whatever you have. Uh, whatever your points are, the, all these points would be in a pile. You're going to score those, add them all up. And then additionally... Whatever two tiles you have in your hand, you can go ahead and choose to discard one of them. And then you can score the, uh, basically rescore the tile that you have left. And in this case, these would not be good for them. But instead, let's go ahead and actually say that this player had this. And let's say that this player over here had this one instead. Because that means for the green, you're going to get to score two points per tile here, which give them six total points. 
And then over here, this one tells you on the subway that you'll score two points per subway tile, which is also six points as well. So making sure you have a really good card for the last card uh, is going to be very beneficial to allow you to rescore. In addition to watching these guys and seeing when they're going to pop up and whatnot. But that's the basic idea of the game. Try and select the best strategy possible, take away certain pieces that your opponents might be getting and use them to your advantage, and become the most powerful town in Bloomtown. Anyway, let's go ahead and come up. I'll discuss how this little thing works, any other little caveats, and then I'll tell you what I think about the game. Bloomtown is a puzzle game at heart, but it's also a tile placement game. You're trying to predict what is going to pop out, when it's going to pop out, and you're going to try and place them down in spots that will be beneficial for your, not only your placement, but for future placement as well. Trying to secure parks in certain areas is going to be very beneficial, little groups of those guys. Additionally, trying to use uh, these guys here, these offices, in a horizontal and vertical row, or these subways going diagonally, are going to score you additional points, and you can continue to push points there. This little token here you get once per game and you can choose to use any of the three abilities on it. You can double, double the scoring of a tile. You can go ahead and have everybody rescore a specific type provided that there's only one tile of that type on the board. So for instance, if there is a rainbow one there and a park one there, but there's only one, you can choose either one and everyone will rescore that, but it only happens one time. And then of course the other one is taking an extra turn. The same is said for these tiles here, the ones that got these little markers on them, except for the fact that you can't choose to do the uh, one that involves this. You're just going to be simply taking an extra turn, or you can choose to uh, score double on one of the t on, on your tile in place. So, fair, fair, fairly, fairly useful, right? Uh, the game is basically like... Um, it, it, it's a puzzle game, right? Because you're trying to get everything matched correctly and you want it all to fit in a nice row. Now, you're not going to likely get an entire board filled out. There's going to be pieces missing here and there. And that's kind of on purpose because it makes you try and do the best you possibly can with the tiles you get. Do you want to go ahead and use all of the green spaces to allow you to get those double actions? But then again, they might not score you as many points as placing in a specific area. And you have to make all these difficult decisions. All at the same time, players are taking pieces that you may or may not want. And additionally, these top things here are going to pop out and might double score when you don't want them to. You have to be aware, okay, there's one of them. That means it makes it more likely that it's going to pop out again before uh, something else might. However, maybe you just flip over a tile and bam, a rainbow, bam, another rainbow. And then you're going to have to instantly, uh, you know, have to instantly uh, do your homes, which you were going for the entire game. So there is a bit of chaos and randomness when it comes to these event tiles and when they're going to pop out and how or how they're not going to benefit you depending on how you're playing the game. Diversity for the game is very important, but in certain aspects, trying to get the same pieces will also help you. Depending on the number of players in the game will determine what your strategy is going to be. The basic variant of the game is the A side, and it makes it very easy to tell which of the different symbols you're going to be going for based on how you place them. This one gets a little more complex as to how you're placing and where and how many green spots are available to you uh, placing down the board. If you are an experienced player in the game, you can simply go on the B side and let somebody who's new play on the A side, I suppose, or just choose to play again uh, and allow players to build up to the point where you can all play on the uh, advanced version of the game. It's a rather simple game rather easy to understand rules very well done i love the artwork has a nice back as well has shows all the different type of artwork as well as on the box itself i believe this is a uh, published game that will be coming out in the next few days and if you're already watching this a week from now then it'll already be out but you can go ahead and take a look at it down below uh in our description and if you're interested in picking up you can overall i had a lot of fun with this game it is a strategy game though and for me specifically a lot of strategy games just bring about a lot of chaos and anxiety because i want to do this and that no i can't do that now i gotta do this so for people who are like me that are you know can get all that it's just like i don't know why for some reason always puzzle games sagrada tiny house uh, tiny towns all those games i'm just like I like them, but it's always frustrating when I want the certain things I can't get it and players are taking the pieces I want and blah, 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 blah. But if that is the type of game that is interesting for you, this is the type of game that you're going to like as well. Beautifully made, wonderfully produced. Definitely a game I would suggest checking out. It's by Sidekick Games, Bloomtown, now available for purchase. Or maybe in a couple days. Or, or, or maybe four, I don't know. It, it, it'll be soon. I'll have a link down below.